welcome to Getting to Know St. Andrew. My name is Jonathan Tompkins. I'm the senior pastor at St. Andrew by the Sea United Methodist Church on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. I'm fairly new to this congregation and I'm still getting to know our church folks. And I want to invite you to also get to know St. Andrew along with me. I have a different guest on each week and I ask the same seven questions so that we can get to know St. Andrew. So today I'm joined by Tom Sharp. Hey, Tom. Good morning. Good to have you with us today. Good to be here. Thank All you. All right, good. And we're going to go ahead and launch right into it. So, Tom, uh, question number one. Okay. Where have you lived? Well, we've lived in a lot of different places. We were uh, corporate gypsies, uh, interrupted with uh, four years with Uncle Sam. So we were in the Navy, uh, Kay and I on Midway Island, which is a small island, mm -hmm. a mile and a half by three quarters on the uh, International Date Line. Then we rejoined uh, Alcoa Aluminum, where that was our uh, corporate uh, career. And that put us in uh, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, Pittsburgh, Chicago. We then moved to Sao Paulo, Brazil for uh, four years, back to uh, Indianapolis and then to Germany for three years, back to Indianapolis and then to China for uh, three years and then early retirement. So how long have you been here on the island? We have been here 10 years. Okay. We actually uh, purchased a home in 1983 uh, when we were on our way to Brazil. We had a one year old, uh, our son was, uh, uh, had just been born and we were on our way to Brazil. So we had to stop here while we were waiting for visas to be uh, put together. So from all that moving around, it sounds like Hilton Head maybe has been the longest place you've lived for a while? Uh, yes, pretty much. We <laughs> I grew, 20, grew up in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, 20 years, and then we had 20 years in Indianapolis, but 10 years here. So it looks like this may be, uh, have the potential to be the longest, yeah. hopefully. Good. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Uh, question number two, Atlantic, Skull Creek, or Sound? Right. We are uh, on the Atlantic. So we are, one reason we're here is because of the beach. We fell in love with that uh, when we were here uh, on our way to Brazil and uh, decided that's where we want to be. So we worked our way towards the, uh, the beach over time. Great. And, uh, and so you live beachfront? Yeah, uh, not beachfront, but- uh, close, close enough? Close, yeah. Good. Beachfront orientated. We're in the tourist district. So on our street of 24 homes, there's two of us that live there full time. The rest oh, are wow. investment or uh, second homes. So a lot, lots of new neighbors uh, each week. It's, right? it's a lot of fun. Actually, during the season, it's, uh, there's a lot of energy with uh, grandma, grandpa, and the kids and the family. And then uh, it's over, uh, as we all know, in September, October. And then it's like living in the country. There's just <laughs> nobody there. Yeah. So great. it works out well for us. Wonderful. Question number three, uh, what careers have you held? You kind of Got into well, that a little bit with your moving around. But. Basically a corporate uh, career with uh, Alcoa, other than uh, time in the uh, Navy and the Civil Engineer Corps. I, I ran the uh, power plant and the water on the island, and Kay was a Navy nurse on the island. Hmm. We had 2,000 people there, uh, 1,200 uh, civilian and 800 military to take care of the 1,200 civilian. It was shore duty, believe it or not. The Navy hmm. was maintaining that so they could have shore duty. Uh, in Alcoa, it was uh, many different jobs, uh, mostly in marketing, strategic planning. I ran uh, a sheet, aluminum sheet and foil business in Brazil, a, a plastic bottle cap business for Coke and Pepsi in Europe, mm. and then started the company actually making plastic bottles to go with the plastic bottle cap. And uh, we did that in China, started uh, making facilities for Coke and Pepsi, where we gave them the whole bottle and the bottle cap. Mm. Uh, then retired and I had one, did some interim consulting, interim CEO work, and then spent uh, three years working for uh, Governor Mitch Daniels in Indian, uh, Anna, as the commissioner of highways. Oh, wow. So okay. that was a very interesting job, a government job. <laughs> I can assume, yeah. So just a quick question about the bottle caps. Were you also responsible for the little sayings when you open it up and, and look at it? Sometimes there's little sayings. Yes. On the yeah. yeah, really. The tabs okay. that, uh, believe it or not, there uh, is a huge amount of money and technology in that bottle cap because if there's a tamper problem, all the uh, bottles on the shelves in the warehouses would probably have to uh, be destroyed. Wow. So we spent a lot of money with uh, Coke and Pepsi uh, 
continually changing the tamper evident uh, characteristics of that. Huh. Yeah. It's Very interesting. Pretty big business. One of those things you don't even think about until you talk to somebody actually in right. the industry. And, yeah. yeah. Great. All right. Question number four. What is barbecue to you? Okay. Very interesting. I, I love barbecue. Having lived in uh, Texas for about uh, two and a half years, I, I think my favorite barbecue is uh, brisket. Okay. And uh, then now, uh, but I also like pork uh, barbecue and certainly being down the Carolinas. And uh, so I like uh, pork barbecue with the uh, mustard sauce, the okay. Carolina sauce. Yes. But uh, brisket would probably be first with the normal. Okay. But recently I found a barbecue sauce down at uh, Piggly Wiggly made by Dukes. Uh -huh. Alabama barbecue sauce. White. Yes. White sauce. Yeah. And is that, I'm assuming that's a cream or a milk base? Uh, sure. I, I, I don't I, question I, the ingredients. I just pour I wonder. Do you like it? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I've had it. It's, it's not my first choice, but yeah. I've definitely had it. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Just recently. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Number five. Uh, tell us about a meaningful God moment. That's, uh, that's interesting. So I was raised on a farm. Uh, I, father was the director of social workers at a state mental hospital. So he had a uh, normal job, but he had three sons and he wanted to be a farmer. So we farmed. Uh, we had a hundred acres, which is now the Cuyahoga, uh, Cuyahoga River National Park by Cleveland. Hmm. We okay. sold that land basically to the, uh, the park service. So you're around nature. You're around animals. You see a lot of uh, birth. You see a lot of uh, death and you see crops. Uh, growing and so you have this sense that there's a a system so early on i uh, uh felt uh, that my religion was mostly in nature mm -hmm. uh, i was raised as a congregationalist uh, mm -hmm. congregational church um, and so i'm quite at ease uh, in uh, nature uh, when i'm on the beach especially on on the island here it just seems like there's a system everything's in in order mm -hmm. uh, since your little lecture and lecture your sermon on uh, grace, uh, that kind of made me think that there's a grace or that in nature for me, uh, there's a system and it's there. Mm -hmm. And I see a little, I was thinking about the soup kitchen. Um, we start out at uh, eight o'clock. There's no activity in the celebration center. And then uh, by about eight thirty, nine, ten 10 o'clock, it's a uh, hundred people or so doing things, uh, a lot of activity. Uh, and we do our prayer and uh, have a little conversation. And then by 11 o'clock, it's quiet again. So I just thinking maybe that's a, uh, that's kind of a God moment where everyone comes together under uh, an umbrella and then we go our way. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and just to clarify for folks who aren't familiar with it, the St. Andrew by the Sea Soup Kitchen, uh, every Tuesday and every Friday, yes, uh, we open up our celebration center uh, and we uh, offer food to anybody who needs it. And yeah. it's mostly folks within our vicinity who can who can walk here. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's become a wonderful ministry of our church. It's, uh, we serve about seventy five to one hundred lunches, uh, sandwiches on Tuesday, cooked meal on Friday, and then there is a uh, fifty to sixty foot. Uh, harvest table of food. It's a mini uh, grocery yeah, store. I love that. So what we're really doing, I think at the end of the day is helping the families financially. Uh, and uh, they can then use their financial resources for transportation or, or housing. Uh, and uh, we are working on a fellowship of uh, bringing the groups together and, and spending time together. So you, I, I've, I've seen you've already started establishing some relationships with, with those yes. folks and, you know, doing some Fun games yeah. with the kids and, yeah. and language getting, is a, getting to know them. Language mm -hmm. is a uh, artificial ba uh, barrier. I think we, uh, we don't tend to walk out, but we are working with the uh, the families on uh, English, teaching them English, and then we are learning to uh, ask them questions to uh, have them speak uh, speak mm -hmm. uh, and, and doing some learning some Spanish too, so that we can communicate with them as yes. well, right? Yeah, yeah. most yeah. mostly English, however. Sure. Uh, just uh, we had I had learned Portuguese being lived having lived in Brazil and German living in Germany. So mm -hmm. as an adult uh, learning a language, I realized that you felt you finally feel free when you can speak the new language or have somewhat of a control of the conversation. Like, please repeat that. 
-hmm. speak slower. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, when you have a language, you say hello, and all of a sudden, there's this barrage of uh, that foreign language coming right. at you, <laughs> and you don't understand it. So we want to uh, try to help the ladies, the families uh, uh, speak and feel comfortable uh, speaking simple. My name is where I'm from. We'll, we'll then go to uh, what is for lunch, or we'll walk down the harvest table and talk about the names of the foods. Uh and mm -hmm. to get a very simple dialogue going yeah on that that's great that's a wonderful ministry of our Thank church you. i'm so glad you're part of that yeah. uh question number six what is a talent that you have uh if i boil that down i i guess uh, uh i get things done i i like to see uh i like to see action uh so I, uh, that's probably my talent uh something i've always uh been uh, tried to do is I wanted to be able to communicate or talk to anyone at any level. I felt I wanted to be able to talk somebody digging a ditch to somebody that was a CEO or president mm -hmm. of a, a company. Mm -hmm. And that's not to be derogatory, but um, that person digging the ditch is serving a, a well, a well needed service also. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be able to uh, communicate with uh, I don't know how to say it all, mm -hmm. all stratas, uh, maybe all economic levels, yeah. different uh, feelings and cultures. The Apostle Paul says, I've become all things to all people, right? So, so you're, you're yeah. kind of, uh, you're, you're being biblical with that. So, yeah. 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 And yeah. we like to travel and we like different cultures and try to understand uh, uh, how people live. I, I have come to believe that uh, there are people in the world, many people in the world that are happier than Americans. Uh, we think. <laughs> Who have less than, than we yes. do, right? Yeah. I think maybe we mm -hmm. have a wonderful system, but there are people in all countries have birthdays and they have holidays and they have celebrations. They have children, and they have weddings. Uh, and many of them uh, are, uh, uh, I think, in their culture, in their setting, uh, as happy and probably happier than, than many of us are. Mm -hmm. Quite mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Okay, number seven, uh, what is something you like about St. Andrew by the Sea? What I really like about is, is the friendliness of the people. Uh, people are very friendly to uh, talk. But the key probably is we have a huge amount of uh, talent available. Mm. Uh, and if you make a opportunity available or you ask somebody to do something, people are very willing to uh, reach out and help you with whatever means they can. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of really creating uh, those opportunities and, and maybe a, a simple asking. Uh, then people get involved. We've, we've noticed this at the, at the soup kitchen, volunteers come and go based on travels and uh, movement. But uh, somehow I think the, uh, the good Lord always sends a, a group of volunteers. We seem like we're very short one week uh, or in the summer but all of a sudden people, people come up uh, and help mm -hmm. us. And mm -hmm. uh, the church has been very good uh, to the soup kitchen. It uh, started the soup kitchen, uh, our parishioners, and uh, very, uh, very supportive financially and with goods and spirit and help. So uh, yeah, we're a very uh, outreaching congregation, I believe. I believe so too, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Good. Well, Tom, thank you. It All was right, great getting to know you. And friends, thanks for joining us. And we will look forward to seeing you next week.